இந்தியாவிற்கான சீன அம்பாசடர் திரு சன் பைடாங் அப்படிங்கிறவர் இன்றைக்கு மிக முக்கியமான கருத்துக்கள் எல்லாம் ஒன்று சேர்த்து ஒரு வீடியோ வெளியிட்டிருக்கிறாரு அந்த வீடியோல அவர் சொல்லியிருக்கிற விஷயங்களை தான் இந்த காணொலி நம்ம காட்டியிருக்கிறோம் அவர் இந்த வீடியோல சொன்ன மிக முக்கியமான விஷயங்கள் என்னன்னு பாத்தீங்க அப்படின்னா இந்தியாவும் சைனாவும் ஒரே படங்களை தான் பயணிச்சுக்கிட்டு இருக்கிறோம் இந்தியாவிற்கு தேவையான எல்லா விதமான உதவிகளையும் சீன அரசு செய்வதற்கு தயாராக இருக்குது நிச்சயமா இந்திய அரசு இந்த கோவிட் நைன்டீன் என்று சொல்லப்படக்கூடிய கொரோனா வைரஸ் தொற்றிலிருந்து கண்டிப்பா வெளியில வந்து ஜெயிப்பாங்க அப்படிங்கிற மாதிரி நம்பிக்கை அளிக்கும் உதவா பேசியிருக்கிறாரு இந்த நேரத்துல இந்தியாவோடு ஒருங்கிணைந்து செயல்படுவது அப்படிங்கிறது தான் ஒரு கலெக்டிவ் ரெஸ்பான்ஸா இருக்கும் இந்தியாவிற்கான சீன தூதர் திரு சன் வெய்டாங் வீடியோ வெளியிட்டிருக்கிறாரு அந்த வீடியோ நீங்க முழுசா பார்க்கலாம் லேடிஸ் அண்ட் ஜென்டமன் மை இந்தியன் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் நமஸ்தே ஆன் ஏப்ரல் த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் டுவெண்ட்டி டுவெண்ட்டி விம்ப்ரேஸ் தட் இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் மோமெண்ட் ஆஃப் த செவன்டீஸ் அனிவர்சரி ஆஃப் தி எஸ்டாப்லிஷ்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் டிப்ளோமேட்டிக் டாய்ஸ் பிட்வீன் சைனா அண்ட் இந்தியா as the only two emerging economies with a population of more than 1 billion in the world china and india shoulder the historical mission of the national rejuvenation play a leading role in collective rise of the developing countries and inject important and strong momentum into the profound changes of the world that unseen in a century at this moment it is particularly imperative to recall the original aspiration of establishing diplomatic relations 70 years ago and carry forward the spirit of good neighborly friendship explore on how to coexist with each other between the major emerging and neighboring countries here i would like to highlight three points the first point china and india are fellow travelers against all odds our two countries had fought side by side in the national liberation movement independence and the national rejuvenation are our common goals and the five principles of peaceful coexistence represents our shared vision in the contribution to the international relations and today we speak for safeguarding the legitimate rights and interests of the developing countries just as President Xi Jinping said if China and India speak in one voice the whole world will listen My second point is China and India are pilots in the trend of reform and development In the 1980s and 1990s the two countries embarked on the path of economic reform and development we have been learning from each other and after decades of rapid development today china and india rank the second and the fifth largest economies in the world accounting for half of the asian economy and one fifth of the world Without the mutual development of China and India how could there be an ancient century And my third point is China and India are practitioners of mutual learning among different civilizations The two countries have a long history of trade and exchange originating in India Buddhism thrived in China and today people to people and cultural exchanges between us set off a new wave with 14 pairs of sister provinces or sister and sister cities and mutual personal visits exceeding 1 million annually 
Here, I would like to add one more point. China and India are partners sailing in the same boat. Facing the outbreaks of the COVID-19 around the world, we are helping each other. At the Extraordinary G20 Leaders Summit, President Xi Jinping emphasized that it is imperative for the international community to strengthen confidence, act with unity, and work together in a collective response. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi sent a letter of condolence to President Xi Jinping, and the Indian side offered medical supplies to China. There are so many Indian friends expressed their solidarity with China. And the Chinese State Councillor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi had a phone call with External Affairs Minister Dr. Jay Shankar on the 24th of March. Mr. Wang Yi expressed sympathy and solidarity with India in fighting against COVID-19. Mr. Wang Yi further said, China is ready to share our experiences, provide support within our capacity. We are confident that India can handle and win the battle against COVID-19. China and India should support each other and jointly safeguard global public health. China has provided necessary assistance and convenience for the return of the Indian citizens in Hubei province to India. And on March 28th, the first batch of medical supplies donated to the Indian Red Cross Society by the Chinese charity organizations arrived in Delhi. More batches of the donations are expected to reach India in the coming days. This is the first aid from foreign organizations received by the Indian Red Cross Society. China and India are fighting together against the epidemic with solidarity. It highlights the spirit of mutual assistance and working together through thick and thin. We are sailing together through this troubled water. In retrospect of the seven decades journey, China-India relations have forged ahead despite wind and rain, and gone through an extraordinary path of development. The relations today is hard won. Here are some enlightenment we can draw from the history. First, adhere to the strategic guidance given by the leaders. Over the past 70 years, our two leaders have grasped the general direction of China-India relations from a strategic and overall perspective and steered the course of bilateral relations. President Xi Jinping and Prime Minister Narendra Modi held two informal summits and conducted strategic communication on overall, long-term, and strategic international and regional issues, and agreed to strengthen the closer development partnership between China and India. Second, stay on the general trend of friendly cooperation. China and India have a history of friendly exchanges for more than 2,000 years. The friendly cooperation, which has dominated most of the time, is the prevailing theme. Our joint efforts to combat the COVID-19 epidemic today reminds me of the great sacrifice made by Dr. Cotnes, a member of the 
Indian medical team to China who saved lives in the battlefield for the cause of Chinese liberation. His spirit is a precious legacy for China-India relations. And third, add impetus to mutually beneficial cooperation. China and India share similar national conditions and both are at critical stage of economic development. There are great potential for bilateral cooperation in medicine, information, technology, agriculture, poverty reduction, and connectivity. And fourth, strengthen cooperation and coordination in international and regional affairs. China and India are important members of multilateral mechanisms such as BRICS, SCO, G20, WTO, and China-India-Russia cooperation. We shoulder the responsibility and obligation to ensure the legitimate rights and interests of developing countries, speak up for the emerging economies, and forge a more fair, equitable, and rational international order. And the fifth, handle the differences properly. The two sides have established mechanisms to manage differences and seek a constructive solution through dialogues. Our common interests far outweigh the differences. The two sides should expand cooperation and curb negative factors to proactively shape the bilateral relations and break the circle of up and downs. Nowadays, the China-India relations stand at a new starting point and usher in new opportunities. Both sides should adhere to the basic judgment that China and India pose no threat but offer development opportunity to each other. We should seek wisdom from the thousands of years of our two civilizations to explore a way for major neighboring countries to get along with each other. We should enhance mutual trust, focus on cooperation, managing differences, and seek common development. Enhancing mutual trust is the foundation. Only through mutual respect, consultation on an equal footing, openness, and mutual trust can the two sides correctly view each other's development intention, deepen the basic judgment that China and India are partners rather than rivals, representing opportunities rather than threats to each other. Focusing on cooperation is the approach. The two sides should actively seek convergence of interests, seize all the opportunities for cooperation, and achieve mutual benefit and win-win results by making the pie of cooperation even bigger. Managing differences is the assurance. The two sides should always bear in mind the overall picture of bilateral relations, put differences in an appropriate place, and deal with them properly. And seeking common development is the direction. China and India should join hands with other developing countries in winning the marathon of achieving economic development and people's happiness and national rejuvenation, which is 
an integral component of the building of a community with shared future for mankind. There are four keys we should hold to figure out how China and India coexist with each other, namely leading, transmitting, shaping, and integrating. Leading means to guide the direction of bilateral relations through highlighting the leader's consensus. Transmitting means to translate the consensus into tangible cooperation and outcomes at all levels. Shaping means to proactively shape bilateral relations accumulate positive momentum and go beyond the mode of managing differences. And integrating means to achieve common development through strengthening exchanges and cooperation by promoting convergence of interests. I remember Indian President Ram Nath Kovind and Prime Minister Narendra Modi mentioned the dictum, the whole world is but a family. This is similar to the Chinese philosophy of universal harmony in the world. The ancient oriental wisdom is still showing vitality today. I am confident that China and India have the wisdom, the vision, and the capacity to blaze a path for major emerging neighbors to friendly get along with each other. And let's take a dragon-elephant tango on a glorious journey in the next 70 years and write a new chapter in building a community with a shared future for mankind. Thank you.